Hey guys, so it's time for me to take you through a recap of the World Cup and everything that went down in case you missed it. Um, this World Cup, what happens every four years, only 10 teams inside at this time instead of the normal 14. And it seemed to be one of the me- best tournaments that I've personally watched as a cricket supporter um, ever. So it happened in England from the end of May to the mid-July, so it's been a while now. Um, but quite a few things actually happened. So it started off with England as firm favourites, India not too far behind them, Australia as like a surprise package for possibly, um, as well as some dark horses that included things like New Zealand, possibly West Indies, or even Pakistan. Um, so England, South Africa to start with. England easily beat South Africa to further um, make sure that they were considered favourites. Um, Pakistan capitulated um, in the first game itself, um, but there would be a twist to that story to come real soon. Um, over the next month, lots of different teams. It looked like what looked like it would be a batting World Cup with um, scores of uh, over 400 and even a 500 score predicted by the English media, turning out to be low-scoring games with uh, the bowlers definitely dominating the batsmen. Um, and spin coming into play as the tournament went along. Some really notable matches, Afghanistan playing in uh, playing in the World Cup as the associate nation um, that recently become a full nation, um, made a respectable score against Australia but were chased down easily, New Zealand thrashing Sri Lanka and winning the first few games to, um, to really, really um, set aside their credentials um, and get into those semi-finals. Then you had um, Bangladesh beating South Africa and one of the big things that are coming out of this World Cup was South Africa's disappointing performance. So after losing to England initially, they lost to South Africa, uh, they lost to Bangladesh and India in the next two matches to basically put the semi-final hopes in great jeopardy. Um, Afghanistan kept challenging um, but lost to lost um, to Sri Lanka and then to, um, then to New Zealand um, as well. Um, whereas Australia and India were also performing so- solidly, winning their initial matches in the group stage. It being a 10-team tournament, you have to remember that every team played each other um, twice, um, sorry, once, um, and it was quite. It meant that you had to be quite consistent to be able to get to that final uh, spot. Then, of course, with it being England, the rain couldn't stay away, and we had a whole week where the four games were actually abandoned without a. Uh, uh, with one with a few overs being balled and three others without a ball being balled, the most ever in any World Cup um, to date. So, keeping on going, India Pakistan, a huge match down in Manchester happened on the 16th of June. Um, India thrashing Pakistan and continuing their here um, run of victories against them, 7 0 now, I believe. Uh, and then he kept on going, he had you had the next whole week of uh, games um, that were all leading up to um, teams trying to make the semi-final. India um, remaining unbeaten uh, and up until the later stages of the tournament. So did New Zealand until they were beaten by Australia. Um, and then New Zealand kind of had a slump over the, they were beaten by England as well as um, Pakistan. Um, however, the big turning point of the game, uh, in the whole game, was when Sri Lanka beat England. Now this was uh, one of the upsets of the tournament and what happened was England started to have the semi-final spot threatened by Pakistan who had suddenly found form and turned their tournament around to um, uh, nearly be there um, when it came to the end. So um, the equation, England needed to win their final two games against India and New Zealand to qualify, Pakistan had to win their games or Bangladesh had to win their games and hope that England lost at least one of the two games. What ended up actually happening was uh, England and India much hyped up match again um, in which England won um, followed by um, England basically thrashing New Zealand to be uh, to qualify for the semi-finals in third spot. Australia surprisingly lost to South Africa um, in the last stage of the tournament just before the semi-finals causing India to go top of the table um, despite losing to England, um, as they won their last match against Bangladesh, uh, to uh, to be top of the table. So the semi-finals then confirmed India versus New Zealand and 
Australia versus England. The old Ashes rivalry being um, reborn in the semi-finals. No one had actually expected Australia to get this far in the tournament, especially with the recent sandpaper gate um, issues. But uh, as things turned out, they are actually one of the favourites to win now. However, that wasn't to be. So the first semi-final was pro one of the best games we had watched until that point. Obviously, there were better games to come. But ha over two days due to rain, India made uh, India made uh, two twenty um, one in their for uh, in their overs before the rain got in the way, um, and then they had to come back next day where England uh, New Zealand had a target of two thirty nine. So New Zealand batted first and made 239 for 8 in their 50 overs before rain stopped India's chase and they had to come back the next day with a huge loss of wickets where they were at one stage 5 for 3 with losing Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma the main run getters in the tournament within the first few overs. Following this they had a bit of a fight back with Hardik Pandya and Rishabh Pant the young guns of India trying to come back um, but uh, both losing uh, out of temptation when playing spin. And MS Dhoni, his last World Cup most likely, um, coming in um, and trying to save today. Ravindra Jadeja played his hard out both fielding, bowling and batting, um, but India fell just short by uh, 18 runs as New Zealand upset the um, one of the favourites of the tournament to head into the um, semi-final. Australia versus England was a much more one-sided affair with England completely overawing Australia in all facets of the game and winning with... Um, 18 overs to spare. And here, then there was the final, England and New Zealand. Neither of them winning the, ever having won the World Cup before, um, but having big hopes on them from their respective fans. England, this was the chance to resurrect the game in their own country, um, and they could not, um, could not make it slip this time around, this, uh, after having disappointed in pretty much every World Cup so far. So the match uh, was again a bowlers match um, with New Zealand, um, uh, New Zealand batting first and uh, making 241 for 8 with uh, good contributions from Kane Williamson who has literally been carrying that team throughout the World Cup and captaining um, them to billions. England came out to chase um, with a seesawing affair happening with the England getting on top with some runs but um, New Zealand also coming back with wickets and Trent Bolt. Um, getting quite a few of those wickets. Um, at one stage, the um, England needed 23 runs of the last nine balls. Um, Trent Paul, uh, Ben Stokes was still there, but England had lost um, all other recognised batsmen. Um, and Ben Stokes then tried to hit a six out of the park, um, but was caught by Trent Paul, who did not realise that the boundary line was just behind him and ended up stepping on it, causing it to become a six instead of a wicket. This was what I thought was the turning point of that amazing match and then Ben Stokes uh, recovered and um, sent the game to a super over getting a uh, getting a run um, of the last um, uh, the last ball before being um, run out for the second uh, meaning that the game it'll be the first World Cup final ever to decided by super over the super over um, was uh, made uh, well, England made 15 runs followed by um, New Zealand chasing um, who also made 15 runs. Now you might wonder what the um, deciding criteria here might be. Will they share the um, will they share the um, uh, will they share the trophy, or will they um, will they decide a winner through some weird rule? Well, definitely the second. So the rule that they used was a boundary countback. So the most number of fours and sixes hit by whichever one of those teams in regular time as well as a super over, which uh, England won 17 to 10. This, personally, was a bit of a sad note to what had been an amazing to um, tournament. But England, deservedly so, played better throughout the tournament um, and uh, won the World Cup for the first time ever um, at their home. So that's three World Cups now, the 2011, 2015 and 2019, where the home country has beaten the, um, uh, beaten the rest to win the World Cup on home soil. Well, I hope you liked that summary. Um, can't wait for the next World Cup as well as the many ICC tournaments coming up, such as the World T20 next time. Um, until then, please subscribe to my channel, like this video if you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for more exciting content. Keep watching the Cricket Street. See ya.